Uh, Jason Andro, it's always good to talk to you. I'm, um, I'm very glad that actually we got to uh, uh, talk and connect to you at this moment because it's one of those very important moments for a political observer. And I'm going to put uh, political questions to you. I mean, like, first of all, before we actually go to the political aspect of things and, and why is this happening, I want you to tell me how you feel about this whole thing. This is frankly absolute BS. This is this is this is the United States essentially taking out their impotent rage on Iran. Uh, there is no doubt that this is politically motivated. I mean, Hajime has been uh, a tremendous voice for speaking for the voiceless and people who have been marginalized in society, uh, women, Muslims, the Palestinians, etc. And this is the United States, the, the the great power of the world, demonstrating how afraid that they are of this voice. I mean, this is this is the kind of thing that happens to anybody who, who it speaks out against what the United States does. For all their military might, for their $21 trillion war machine, they are afraid of this woman, this woman with three grandchildren. And I, I think that this largely speaks to oh, what a, a kind of cowards they actually are, that they can stomp away to uh, uh, as many countries as they want, commit as many wars as they want, kill millions of people, tens of millions of people. But if some if, if this woman who, who disagrees with their foreign policy steps into their country, it's now some kind of federal offense and they have to they have to shackle a grandmother. I mean, w w what does that say about the United States? That was absolutely wholly unnecessary. It, it, she, it, she, she's not a big, a big, you know, brute like I am. No, she's just you know, a regular grandmother. She's she, she's not violent. She doesn't have. And I mean, I, I've spoken to her on on many occasions. May, all of them, you know, right here on, on press TV. She's never come off as as terribly, uh, you know, terribly aggressive. Uh, certainly spirited, as you would get out of someone who cares about what's going on. But nothing that would indicate that she's any kind of a danger. I think that this is also partly the United States uh, sending a message to Iran. I don't think that it's any kind of coincidence that they just happen to, uh, you know, target someone who is a journalist and an anchor, someone who works for the state broadcaster. I think they're also sending a message in that regard. Oh, look, I, I, I think it's really... I don't know, maybe it's a coincidence, but this comes right after Iran launches, you know, a satellite into into space. And then all of a sudden they make this kind of uh, seemingly politically motivated arrest. I mean, if, if she had committed a crime, they'd be saying right away why she had been arrested, what she was being charged with and meeting with her lawyers on that right away. But they're not. They're standing there, uh, you know, twiddling their thumbs. Uh, trying to make things uh, terrible for people, not letting people know what's going on, not giving her access to her family, essentially trying to carry off a kind of psychological torture. And I think that this speaks uh, very much to the kind of mentality that the United States has right now when trying to deal with this whole the, the situation with Iran. This is, a, frankly, this is, a, in a manner of speaking, I, I think a terrorist kind of tactic. They're trying to intimidate. Why, why pick someone who's a journalist? I mean, are there no no dangerous people that they could possibly lock up. There's no one who has a history of violence or something like that, but they have to specifically target someone who is, uh, who has spoken out against injustice, who has spoken out against the crimes of the United States, the crimes of U.S. imperialism and other Western countries as well. And they certainly did tend to take this person uh, specifically and, and treat them in this kind of way. So I think this is highly politically motivated. I think that this is, um, they're probably, I wouldn't be surprised if they ended up trying to hold her hostage for uh, someone who was arrested in Iran for, or some kind of U.S. citizen that was arrested in Iran for whatever reason it was. And I, uh, you know, this is the kind of thing that they're they're going, you know, th th I think that they're probably going to do. I mean, I don't have any evidence, but this usually tends to be the case in this kind of s situation. What they, they usually do, and I, I think that it's it, 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 it's 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 a terrible injustice. There is no need to do this. I mean, why would you just rip off someone's headscarf? It it, it, it it's not any difficulty for them to just let her have the headscarf. It's not a weapon. It, 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 it can't hurt anybody. It, it, it's just an intentional act of disrespect. The shackles on someone who doesn't have any history of violence, who has not committed an act of violence against a TSA agents or the police or the Department of Homeland Security or frankly anyone as far as I know, it's not necessary to put shackles on them. It, it's It's completely meaningless. This is just... 
this is just uh, it's seeming almost an intimidation tactic. I mean, the United States has no qualms about our arresting uh, Muslims on the most spurious of grounds, if there are even any, and then end up locking them, you know, indefinitely in various CIA black sites, you know, across the world, you know, f for just their own political motivations, then end up letting them go years later uh, without having any kind of a charge. So I think this is tremendously politically motivated. This isn't just, a, 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 you know, an aggressive act against someone who is uh, speaking in the spirit of those who are oppressed around the world. But I think this is also definitely trying to send a message to Iran that that you know even outside of all their legal constructs, outside of all their their ideas about sanctions and uh, you know uh, uh, nuclear deals and whatever, they're still going to carry out these kinds of things. And I think that it's not a coincidence that it happened to someone in the media, someone who is uh, a broadcaster, someone who is uh, very much a voice. And I, I think that speaks uh, volumes about what they've been doing here. Okay, Jason, just uh, mm, just hold on there because I'm going to bring in Mr. Randy Short. Let's bring back Mr. Jason Andrew from Ontario. He's also helping us, contributing to this show about mm, the situation surrounding Ms. Hashemi right now. In his previous comments, uh, Mr. Andrew told us that this is politically motivated. Uh, of course, uh, mm, there are other aspects to her arrest as well. Mr. Andra, I'd like to ask you, of course, you made it clear for us that it is politically motivated, but isn't that a well-known fact? I would really uh, doubt to call it a fact, at least from this point on. Uh, it, this is a known fact to many people in the world, let's just put it that way, that America is the land of the free. And I've been saying this since the morning. This is what they claim to be, where free expression is practiced, where people can say what they think. And for that matter, I know a lot of Americans of, um, that speak their minds about different matters in the world. Mazia Hashemi, an American, enjoying that right, had that right as well, like any other person who lives in America. Don't you think what they've done to her is totally against one of the basic principles on which America is based. Oh, definitely. The, the first thing on the list of your rights is the freedom of speech. And it, that would be something that she uh, exercised quite regularly and, and did a tremendous job in doing so. And that was what the founding fathers told us. You have to be able to speak your mind. There has to be a freedom of the press. There has to be an ability to criticize those in power, or you end up with the kind of, say, feudal dictatorship, which many of them rejected in England when they came over to found the United States. But it, as we have seen, much of that uh, revolutionary spirit, uh, spirit has waned over the past couple centuries, and it seems that the U.S., despite its uh, foundation as a country that was a rejection to the feudal order of England, the uh, being beholden to the king and to and to uh, the absolute authority of uh, the the crown and by proxy the church as well. Those who wanted to get away from that and found a new republic under new principles, uh, many of them uh, radical new ideas about property ownership, uh, rights to bear arms, uh, free speech, etc., proclaiming themselves to be, uh, you know, the first free republic, you know, the, where people were allowed to live the right, the, the right to pursue, uh, to pursue happiness, yet at the same time, held human beings as property and slaves. Women were considered to be property as well. Uh, the Native American population were considered to be, uh, they used the, 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 the term savages. They weren't even considered to be human. So I think that speaks very much about the what their real notions about freedom and democracy and rights were really about. Many of the early elections, many of the polling stations were put very, very far away from uh, from the poor population, some of whom would have had to travel 10 miles to go and vote, uh, needing uh, traveling by horse or by foot, deliberately excluding the lower classes of society from being able to participate 
in that kind of uh, that kind of a vote. And we do see that pattern continued today by uh, voter registration purges. Uh, not having enough uh, actual voting booths in areas where uh, essentially it would be literally impossible for everybody who was uh, able to who was entitled to vote be able to do so just given how much time per vote and uh, how many people there are etc and so we do see this uh, constant manipulation that has been going on and we can mention the civil rights from the 1960s the residential schools uh, where many of the indigenous children were, were, were taken away and were stripped of their culture and their rights uh, the, the the trail of tears the creation of reservations for the uh, remaining uh, Native American population etc the United States claims to be the champion of freedom democracy they were so outraged when Jamal Khashoggi was killed but where are they in this situation where they the where they are the aggressors oh they haven't killed her but they have certainly silenced her in another way with accusations of well we don't know because they haven't actually made any accusations yet they haven't charged her with any crime uh, thus far that I believe that that um, I believe that uh, when you're under arrest in the United States they have 24 hours to charge you or they have to let you go something to that effect well they certainly just can't indefinitely hold you on detention which uh, well legally they're not allowed to do but they continue to do it anyway they've done it to a lot of Americans uh, they've done it to uh, plenty of foreigners in Guantanamo Bay anybody who the system just feels is a problem something that is just um, perhaps too much of a questioning spirit is enough to have these kinds of things thrown against them i i've seen a uh, a previous a, a journalist for uh a press tv uh caleb moppin getting a high security warning on his plane tickets that when he wanted to go somewhere it said that he was a high security risk for what for essentially just having uh, criticized the u.s empire having committed no violent act ever in his life and yet we see the treatment of jamia on the, the the same ground she was free to move about the the country before and then all of a sudden they've decided to change their mind and say that she has to be arrested right now detained and you know, possibly questioned and treated in a, a manner that is befitting someone who is a uh, a criminal. This is almost the way that you would treat a terrorist. And uh, to some people, ideas which run counter to the United States could be considered uh, a, a, a terrorist act, uh, given the mentality that the United States has had at least uh, since the events of September 11th, 2001. Anybody with a, uh, a serious dissenting voice is considered a, a threat to the system and someone that needs to be stomped out. I mean, it's, it's it, frankly, uh, uh, the home of the free and the land of the brave. If they're free, why are they being arrested? If they're uh, the land of the brave, why are they so afraid of a, a grandmother who has a dissenting opinion that they have to treat in such a, a brutal and inhumane manner? It's not necessary. She's not a hardened criminal who is who has a history of violence and drug dealing and all other kinds of antisocial behavior she's she's a grandmother it's it's not necessary to treat her this way uh, she's she's not going to be able to outrun the police she's not going to be able to it, it, you know go underground and fight the system or anything she's she's just just, just there and they're treating her uh, frankly like she is a terrorist and it's it's absolutely it's absolutely nonsense. Where is the where is uh, the outrage by the United States? If Jamal uh, Khashoggi can get this, you know, this uh, kind of attention given the heinous crime that was carried out against him, why isn't uh, perhaps maybe reflecting upon their own previous opinion that maybe you should treat uh, journalists a little bit better than that? But uh, Maritza is not one of the elites. She's not uh, one of the New York. Pardon me, the Washington Post, you know, 
you know, upper strata. They're not, you know, one of the, uh, the people who parrot elite opinion. Uh, Jamal Khashoggi, Khashoggi was one of the ones who said Assad must go, and they're very uh, uh, happy to come to his defense, where she, she has uh, certainly said the opposite, where the people of Syria have a right to uh, have their own ideas about what their destiny should be, regardless of what anyone thinks about it. It's it's their country. They should make that kind of decision. So she's not one of the media elite that would certainly be protected by that system. She's very much the opposite, one who is uh, opposed to much of what it does and a very critical of it. And we see those uh, kind of same protections or the same kind of moral outrage from the establishment uh, it, it's just, just not here. That same kind of uh, you know dignity and respect is sure. not afforded to those who. Jason, let me hold you there right now. Thank you very much. Uh, let me just. Uh, our colleagues uh, are trying to actually uh, give uh, different inputs to our viewers uh, via 